All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a 2016 Nissan Versa here. It's got wheel bearing noise from this front driver's side wheel bearing, so we'll go ahead and get started. First, take off the wheel. It's a 21 millimeter. pin out of here. Pretty massive cotter pin. And I believe this is going to be a 30 millimeter axle nut. Let me go ahead and show you what it's doing though. I don't know if you can, I guess I should have showed you when the wheel was still on, but this thing was crazy loose. We're not going to do a brake job, so I'm just going to take off the caliper bracket bolts. Go get some hanging apparatus. So I can hang the caliper up. One second. These are pretty handy to have so that you can take your caliper off without having to worry about Letting it hang by the brake line because that is a no go. Let's see if it's the same size. It's like a 19. to loosen. There we go. Find the bottom one. Alright, they're loose. I'll show you which ones those are. So it's this top one and this bottom one. Hopefully you can see that I could not see what you were seeing. Caliper off, find your hook. Like I said, I like to suspend these from the coil spring if possible. Looks like that fit in there nicely. Get it out of your way. Remove your rotor. So I don't know if you can see that. I think you should be able to see it. Let me get you closer. And let me tilt you down. All right, so I'm gonna get you in here closer. So hopefully you can see, maybe even hear the movement. It's raining right now, so I'm not sure what you'll see or hear, but it's a little hard to see on video, I can admit, but there is some play here that should not be here. And uh, when you're driving down the road, you can sway the car back and forth. 
um, and the sound goes away when you sway one way and gets louder when you sway the car the other way and that's very typical of a front wheel bearing uh, going bad. So we'll go ahead and continue here. I'm gonna take these top two fasteners off, lower ball joint, hit with a, a hammer and a pry bar to get that loosened up. And uh, then the spindle is out. Oh, and of course the tie rod end on this side, right over here. And then you're gonna wanna make sure you get your uh, ABS speed sensor unhooked as well. So I'll do that real quick. And then uh, we will resume. Go from there. See if I can get you guys set back up. Okay. All right. Looks like those are gonna be probably larger. Okay. They are 21s. 21s on both sides. Let me get my long wrenches. So I'm going to use the impact. It is my tool of choice for the most suspension work. Break those out of your way. some Loctite on them. So when you put them back together, you're going to want to put some Loctite on them as well. All right, before we pull those out, I'm going to want to get these other fasteners loose. Uh, looks like a 14. Bingo. So tie rod end is a 14 millimeter. Now before we take that all the way off, I'm going to, instead of just beat on the knuckle with the hammer, I'm gonna see if hitting on the top side of the nut with the air hammer is a quicker process. Oh, and what do you know? It's out. So that was successful. Screw the nut off the rest of the way. There you can see your tie rod end is loose. All right. And then it's a 10 millimeter for the ABS sensor. Let me get my set of sockets out. My 10 off. Car is rusty or very old. Sometimes these are tricky to come out, but this car is a 2016, so not very old. Pretty easy to pull that out; it just slips out. So the last thing we have to do is get this ball joint fastener loose, which I would imagine is probably also a 14. That's usually how it goes. Let's see. Yep. Let's see what the other side. You guys can still see everything. Looks like it. All right. Get this lower ball joint fastener loose. All right. Use their hammer again. Tap this fastener through so we can get this ball joint to release. And there it goes. So you can tap it with a hammer if you don't have an air impact or an air hammer. All right, so last thing is we just need to get it to release from the lower ball joint. So sometimes you can hit it with a hammer, sometimes you can get a pry bar on it. Go ahead and take these fasteners loose. Take the time. Pull that out. Alright. I'm going to push my X. 
axle through if it'll let me. A little bit of penetrating oil where the ball joint comes up through. Well, if there's anything left in here. And then it's split on the back side. So if you if you put in a screwdriver or a pry bar and try and open that up a little bit, a lot of the times it'll let go that way as well. So that's what I'm gonna try. Kind of cheat. See if this will help me. Still the air hose from you. I'm gonna use my air hammer again. It usually seems to make pretty light work of. There we go. So as you can see, let me give you a little bit of detail. So this has a, a notch here in the center and my air hammer has, you know, that lines up with it. So a little bit of air hammering that just pushed it right on out. All right. All right, so here I've just got two pieces of four by four and an appropriate socket that fits perfectly on the back of this hub. So we're trying to press the hub out at this point so that we can take out the snap ring on the front and press out the bearing. Um, you can use uh, a slide hammer and a hub puller uh, to pull this off when it's still on the car. Um, this is just another easy way that just about anybody can do. So showing you how to do that. Essentially find a size that fits just on the hub and you just give it quite a few hard whacks with the hammer. You can see it already started moving and you just kind of keep going. Reposition it, make sure everything's solid. Do this a few more times, it should pop out. Oh, there we go. As you can see, the hub has now released. All right, so we're gonna have to remove that, that inner race of the bearing off of this hub. That's pretty typical, actually, what these do. So you can use heat on the race. It'll swell up, and sometimes you can get it off that way. Um, and then you can also use a grinder. Uh, try not to actually nick the hub itself, just get close. Then you can use a hammer and a, a chisel or an air chisel like I usually do, and then it'll split and turn off, spin off. So now I'll go get set up in the, uh, I'm not sure if I wanna use my press yet or not, or just a rental tool you, anybody can get from O'Reilly's just to show how easy it is. But you can see here, there's a snap ring right here on this outer edge. We'll have to get that out. We'll clean it up just a bit so the bearing will have an easier time pressing out. Go from there. I'll get you guys back on when I'm set up. All right, so now essentially what I've done is I've got it set up on the press. Uh, I've got a little uh, bearing and seal press kit. You've got these different pucks that you find the one that fits the bearing perfectly. 
the right size. And then I've basically just got a large socket sitting on top of that just to take up room so you don't have to pump forever. Um, just makes it a little quicker and less time consuming. And then essentially once you've got it set up, you just want to make sure that it's completely level and flat. And then you just pump it and press the bearing out. You can see it start to move. have a press this makes a very light work of the job if you have to use one of those uh, those rental tools where you basically have a long threaded rod that goes through and pushes it out you can do it that way but it's a lot harder on on bearings that are pretty seized in there I'll put something over here behind the wall in case the bearing falls Okay, now we'll get set up to press the new one in, and then we'll go from there. All right, so something I forgot to mention, I mean, I, I did mention it, but I didn't show it on camera. If you can see in here, there's, there's a groove right in the top of, there you go, now the camera focus. There's a groove right in the top of that, and that's the direction the bearing presses out. You wanna make sure you pop that snap ring out. Um, and I just used a simple set of needle nose pliers, just went under the snap ring and kind of worked its way out. Pretty simple, pretty easy, self-explanatory. Uh, so now what I like to do is I like to spray some WD-40 or penetrating oil um, inside the bore of the bearing and just kind of use some emery cloth or light sandpaper just to clean out the bore. Make sure there's no burrs. Get nice and smooth. Use a rag to wipe it out. Get it as clean as you can. And then I also like to make sure that. I clean out the grooves. So there's a groove on the back side, even though it's not used for a snap ring. And then there's a groove on the front side, which I've already showed you is for the snap ring. So just make sure you don't have any rust or corrosion built up in there. And then clean it out, make sure the groove is nice and clean. Um, and now it's, it's ready to press the new bearing in. A nice prep, prep surface, nice and clean. Uh, sometimes what you can do if you're having a hard time um, getting the bearing in or out, you can use heat around the hub, or I guess the spindle you call it. You'd use heat around here, uh, and that in makes the, the metal expand. Um, and then to get the bearing in, if you're having trouble, you know, have it sit in the freezer overnight. And the combination of a warm spindle and a cold bearing usually gives you enough gap that it almost fits right in without having to use too much force. But since I have a, a press, um, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. So I'm gonna get set up here and then we'll, we'll press the new bearing in. Something else to note, sorry, I'm trying to make sure you see everything. It's, it's raining outside and it's a little darker than normal, but on the back side is where your ABS um, speed sensor goes. So you wanna make sure your new bearing, you press in with the magnetic ring facing the inside of the car so that your speed sensor um, can pick up the reluctor wheel that's built in there. So just another thing to note. All right, we'll get set up here and then I'll turn you back on. All right, now I've got to resituate. It's not perfectly straight on there. And this tool needs to be just Perfect, so that it goes into the bore. And you can pretty much 
much fill when it bottoms out. It just doesn't go anymore, and you don't want to put too much more pressure because this is a 20-ton press. It can definitely put some unneeded stress on the steering knuckle ears. Okay, now once you've finished that, take your items out, look at it, inspect it, make sure you can see the groove. Let me see if I can get over here. Make sure you can see the groove where the snap ring is supposed to sit. If you can, that means you went all the way. Then on the other side, as you can see, we've got the magnetic tone ring, essentially, I guess pickup. Um, and that's how it's supposed to be installed. We'll flip it back around. We'll put our snap ring back in and reverse of removal. We'll put it all back together. Let's see if I can show you putting the snap ring in. It's pretty simple. Getting it out and putting it in is pretty easy work. It's putting it in. You don't even honestly need, Let's see if you can even see what I'm doing. Don't even really need any special tools. So I essentially just pushed it in with my fingers. You heard it snap. Then you'll just want to get a flat blade screwdriver. Just kind of tap it around with a hammer just to make sure it's fully seated in that groove and you're good to go. Good to install it. Sometimes that's all you need. Get my chisel back out. All right, so that's all you do. And then I do the same thing with the hub as I did with the inside of the bearing bore. You get some WD-40 and some emery cloth or light sandpaper, clean it off, make sure there's no scuffs or scratches or if you can fill any indentations or if it's not completely uh, straight all the way across, then you need to replace your hub. So I'll go ahead and clean that off. back over here at the shop press apologize for the lighting it's a little bad i've got another one of those bearing and race installer tools on the top on the back side you want to make sure it's on the inner race so you're not going to push out the bearing and then down here below uh, i've got it also on one of those uh, tools from the sill bearing race kit um, essentially i just got it so it's off of the studs because with all the pressure you're going to end up pushing those studs out um, when you know, when you're pressing this this hub in, so then you just press it down, and as you can see, it's it takes a while, but it does go down. And once again, you just want this to go all the way until it feels like it bottoms out.
There we go. It feels like it's not moving anymore. Let's go ahead and turn our open our press back up, release it, and she's all ready to be back installed in the vehicle. Put this back up. Take our tools off. All right, that's what she looks like, finished product. Got your hub bearing installed, hub on the actual spindle. And then it feels nice and tight. There's no play in the bearing. It's a little bit difficult to move, but not too much resistance. And that's how you install the bearing. So now let's go put it back on the car. All right, we're back at the car. And uh, as we've said many times before, installation is just reverse of removal. So go ahead and put this back on our little ball joint. Sometimes you have to kind of go up and down with that ball nut stud, or sorry, ball joint stud, because it has a, a little divot cut into it for this bolt to slide through. And if you go too far up, it doesn't slide through. If you go not up far enough, then obviously it's not going to go either. So now, the other tricky part of this, getting the axle shaft back into the hub. Push it down, that's the easiest way to make room. Then you just have to line it up with the splines. We're gonna get in the strut, strut nuts back in. We're gonna put it through and then we'll put some thread lock around. Alright, so we got it through. Got some. Let's see if you can still see everything under there. Alright, so let me tilt you guys up. Alright, so you got some blue medium strength thread locker. We'll put on the threads of these strut bolts. Put the nuts back on. Give it impact. So remember those are 21s. So we got 21 back on our impact. Along with our switch. Okay, find where I put it. There you go. And then we'll tighten it up. We'll check torch sets after that. All right, guys, I finished up the rest of this job. I apologize, I ran out of storage on my camera. Um, essentially, the last things I did was tighten up the ABS speed sensor bolt, uh, the tie rod end bolt, uh, lower ball joint fastener, um, axle nut if I didn't do that already on the video, and put the wheel back on and test drive it. So, uh, this customer's ready to get back on the road. Hope you enjoyed the vehicle video sorry <clears throat> hope you enjoyed the video um if you did please like share and subscribe um give me any comments of ways i can improve or what else you'd like to see um it's a wet humid day here in texas and i'm ready to be back in the house so hope you guys have a good week have a good memorial day take care